Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Warner, and I'm with Entredot, as you probably already know. Uh, I'm doing something a little bit newer tonight. Uh, we are on Facebook Live, but I'm doing it through a, a different platform that is much richer and basically acts as a front end to Facebook Live. It's called Be Live TV. Be Live TV. It's been around a while, and I'm using it for the first time. So if I mess this up, it's totally my fault. It's nothing wrong with the platform. But this enables me to share a screen, which I'm going to do tonight. This enables me to bring others into the conversation live in video section as well. I won't do that to anybody here tonight. <laughs> uh, I would only do that with your permission. And allows me to toggle back and forth between me and and the various screens I'd like to show to you. So be live TV, if you're not using it and you're doing some live broadcasts on Facebook, consider it. It's not terribly expensive. It's 20 bucks a month or something like that. And you get a lot of richness and ability to share lots of things besides your face on the screen. So let's get on into it. Tonight, uh, we're gonna talk about financing your business. The, the act of raising capital for your company. And I'm gonna go through some slides that I've used for many years. You'll see the, the date on the bottom of some of these slides goes back probably five or six years or more. Uh, but this is a presentation that I've used for many years. Uh, some of you on, on the, the program here may have seen it before, so I apologize ahead of time. But look, Getting a company started in the first place, after you've established the premise of your business and you created a marketing and sales plan and you know you're competitive, so you, you're gonna get going, more often than not, you're gonna need some money. In some cases, a lot of money. If you're starting a product business, you can count on many tens of thousands, if not up north of 100 or 200,000 if you're doing a lot of software and where she had hardware development. Uh, consumer, consumer products are right up there with the tech products in that regard. On the other hand, you may be starting a services business, not a lot of capital involved. You'll st still need some money, prob probably less than $50,000 when you add up all the work you gotta do to get the company in a position of launching and then uh, actually launching and having enough money to uh, have marketing programs to get new customers and get your cash flow up so that uh, you're cash flow positive. Now we're gonna talk about all of that in just a second. So this is all about financing. I hope, you, I hope you, you're uh, gonna enjoy this. So now I'm going to change the screen for the first time ever. Watch this, <laughs> it worked. This is a slide I have used quite often. I'm trying to depict the, the options for financing within the context of the various stages of a business. So hang with me as I try to clear this chart for you. Along the top in green, you've got um, various steps uh, depicting the, the maturity of a company. The ideation seed stage is you're just getting going. You're doing the early planning, maybe some development, some survey work, things like that. So some people call that pre-seed, by the way. The next I call creation is where you're actually uh, doing serious development on the product and or the methodology for your service. And you've tried it out on a few people, a few potential customers, and you have you're, you're trying to prove the concept. This is called the seed stage. The startup phase is money to launch the business. So some people call that seed as well, but it's, it's money that you need in order to finance marketing, sales, and other operations within your company to get the company off the ground and, and uh, seriously sell to early customers. Then I call the fourth is the expansions phase. You know it probably as the A round, or in some cases, people define it differently. It might even be the B round. It doesn't much matter what the title is of these rounds. It's the maturity that you're at. 
to further expand the business. And in some cases, some company needs many hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not a few million. The later stages, which we're not going to talk about, which are IPOs and mezzanine rounds and things like that, I'm not going to bother talking about those today, but they may be in your future and they're usually good things for you where you, you can actually orchestrate an exit uh, through investment banking, financing, things like that. So those are the state uh, stages of maturity of a business. Now the green arrows going left to right with titles about them are various financing options. And there are a lot of them. So where the little green arrow starts and ends is basically where that financing option applies across these five levels of maturity. Yeah, pretty simple, huh? So the first one and the obvious one is bootstrapping. You don't need any money at all. You're gonna, you're gonna fund this thing out of your own pocket. The founder or maybe a group of founders does that. That means you 100% own the company. You're not borrowing it. You're not giving away any equity. In the course of doing this, you're, you're financing it yourself, probably coupled with bootstrapping techniques, which we'll cover in a minute. Very similar to the techniques used in cash flow management that we talked about last week. Grant financing, particularly for biotech and tech companies with government grants uh, uh, in the SBIR program, in the STTR program, two major multi-billion dollar funds the government puts up to finance new technologies. But there are foundation grants and things like that as well. But the advantage of this is this is non-dilutive funding. You get a grant, you don't have to pay it back, usually, hardly ever, let me say it that way, hardly ever. And But there's a lot of reporting and there's a lot of bureaucracy to get the thing going in the first place. So this is one, if you go after it, you get several hundred thousand dollars in phase one to phase two grants, but it takes a long time to get them and a lot of work to get approved and a lot of reporting once you are approved and get the money because they want to know how you're spending it. The third is crowdfunding. The very first form of crowdfunding we're going to talk about is rewards-based or donation-based crowdfunding. That is where um, you, know, you, you put up, it's particularly good, let me say, for retail products, for example, where you can offer uh, a reward of a first release of your product, uh, like a coffee cup. That's one we have some personal experience with. Um, and uh, in trade for a certain amount of money donated by an individual. So it's a way on a crowdfunding so uh, software platform, and there are hundreds of them out there that you can, you can select from. Uh, you can raise money that's donated to you. And again, you don't have to pay it back. You do have to give them the reward though. Now, the next group are for seed level, this creation phase. Friends and family, uh, financing is a term that you've probably heard of many times. I'm gonna cover a little bit more detail what it means, but it can be equity financing, just so you understand that's where individuals or entities buy shares of your company. They've invested in your company and get back stock certificates equal to however many shares they bought based on the, the price per share that you, you had offered them. Also debt financing through friends and family as well. In fact, I urge most people to borrow money from friends and family, not do equity financing. So more, more about that later. But the terms that you'll get are, are pretty reasonable because it's friends and family. Uncle Jim and Aunt Sue, your dad or mom, uh, your college roommates are going to be your financiers. So the terms won't be as strict as the next group, which are the angel investors of the world, which are predominantly equity investors, almost all of them, the formal angel groups that you've heard about here in the Southeast and in North Carolina and here in RTP. And they're going to have preferred terms and many other very special terms that, that go with an equity investment. The next form of crowdfunding, debt crowdfunding, comes into play at this creation phase as well, uh, where, where you can borrow money from the crowd. That means 
you put up a deal on a crowd debt crowdfunding platform, borrowing money with under certain terms for you to pay it back to them at pretty reasonable interest rates. So um, you got the payments to deal with, but you have not sold any equity in this case. Bank and non-bank, and what I mean by that, banks that are either regulated very loosely or not at all, and formal banks uh, play in this arena as well. Uh, SBA back programs with the right kind of backing by the founders of the company, like like uh, personal guarantees, things like that. Great credit ratings, nothing, no findings or judgments against you all. Um, if you get up enough collateral, you can borrow money from a bank. But it, I have to t say, it's it's rare at this very early stage. More likely later. Uh, but non-bank financing. Uh, where uh, you work basically through broker dealers that find financing institutions that might be interested in your in your product or service. Equity-based crowdfunding starts to creep in here at this startup phase and beyond, where now you really are selling equity and all of the SEC guidelines that go with that that have been so carefully uh, negotiated and prepared over the last six or seven years. Yeah, you know, it's taken that long to figure out how to do this. Um, and then strategic strategic partnerships, which uh, many companies never think of. That hey, maybe your first financier is going to be a customer. Go figure, you know. Um, or a strategic partner that has a complementary product or service, and you go to market together, uh, and perhaps could provide you some early funding for royalties and warrants and things like that that in return for for their investment or uh loan to you the later uh, uh financing options are through the venture capital world investment banking world the institutional investors i'm not going to talk about the, them at all we'll do that in some program in the future that's the landscape of financing. So that was a long-winded little speech, but uh, it, it's important for you to get a perspective of all of what you could do. A lot of people I talk to about this don't realize how many options are really available to them. And the task at hand is to figure out which is the right one for you and your business. So why don't we now go through uh, a, couple, a few more slides where I'm going to talk about, for example, what is founder financing? What is this friends and family thing all about? And I'm going to do that for every every uh, kind of an investor or or uh, institution from whom you can borrow money uh, as groups. So it's four or five, four slides or so to give you a perspective of who we're talking about here that you're going to have to approach. Now, founder financing means uh, that the founder or founders, plural, in some combination of their own money and bootstrapping, bootstrapping techniques, cash flow management techniques, don't need any money from anybody. But this has to be done very carefully. Whether you realize it or not, starting a serious business is not for free. You gotta have some money to do this. You think about it, you got methodology to develop, you got software develop, to develop perhaps, uh, you got marketing, you got to put up a website, that's going to be two or $3,000 if you do it right. Some early marketing awareness programs, email campaigns, well, you're going to either do that yourself or you're going to hire a marketing person. But usually the businesses that can be easily bootstrapped are services businesses. There's no capital involved, no, no capital investment required. You're not you're not building a building or you, or doing a big mortgage on a building. You're not putting a lot of equipment someplace to manufacture something. But you may have to lease some office space, so you want to manage the payments for the lease, like, <laughs> like get an abatement for two or three months before you start paying, put all the uh, upfit uh, in your, in, in the, into the lease uh, so it gets uh, spread over the life of the lease, which could be three to five years. Um, so manage the cash flow of lease payments is my message there. 
uh, your deals for products uh, in particular, but I think for services as well is you want to get money up front. So like for, for on, uh, online retail, e-commerce, this is simple. An easy, easy example is you got a coffee cup you're selling and it's uh, $15.95. Somebody orders it, puts in a credit card for a uh, credit card transaction for $15.95. It's the purchase button and that money comes right to you. Before you've even bought the coffee cup from your supplier uh, to send off to them. In fact, the supplier may be working with, you know, through Amazon. You just have to kick off a deal. <laughs> but you got the money before you had to spend any in order to build it and or ship it. Now for services business is the same kind of thing, you know, but you, you, you basically wind up charging enough to cover your operating expense month by month for the people to finance the people or from the people that are performing the service. You ask for that amount up front. It usually winds up to be 40, 50% of, of the total uh, revenue. So you at least get your expenses covered, your operating expenses cover, covered, and through the course of the deal, you get more and more income. And by the by, the final month or week of the of your uh, engagement, you get the rest, and, and therein lies your profit. But you you were never in the hole. You managed cash flow wisely. Uh, <clears throat> of course, you do these draconian things to keep. <laughs> salaries low. You buy th you buy used equipment, uh, and uh, I've already said revenue precedes expense. You, you collect money before you have to spend any to produce whatever it is you're going to whatever it is you're selling. Um, so all these deals that I've just described are cash flow positive instantly. So that's what founder financing and bootstrapping is all about. It's a world of cash management from the very beginning never running out of money, uh, but there could be some money coming from other sources as well if you can't quite get there to bootstrap the whole thing. But it would be a whole lot less if, uh, if you didn't have these cash flow options available to you. So that's founder financing and bootstrapping. Now that term friends and family is an interesting one. Uh, some people call it friends and family and fools, kind of a, with tongue in cheek. But look, these are people, people you know, people that you trust, people that trust you. Go figure. Look at that. You all like each other and have a great deal of respect for one another. These are people with whom you have trusted relationships. That's what makes this different. This is different than going to angel investors or later the venture capital world. These are people that don't know you from all in all, usually. But these are friends and family and business associates, people you know and trust. So they're, of course, wealthy. They are accredited. That's going to be very important that you know that and that they are if you're doing any sort of equity financing and these SEC rules start kicking in. Um, but you do know and trust each other. They usually don't want to take uh, uh, a role in your company, hardly ever. In fact, you probably don't want Uncle Jim and Aunt Sue running some part of your company when you, when you uh, got $50,000 from them. Uh, generally, now this is a wide range, but this could be as simple as a 5K in, uh, investment or a 5K loan preferably all the way up to 50K, depends on what they can afford. I've seen several of these in the last year, all the way up to 100K for any single individual. So that's Wealthy Jim and Aunt, Aunt Sue, uh, maybe uh, putting up a lot of money for a nephew they really like. So they're usually not professional investors. That's why you gotta be careful to understand the kind of terms that you're gonna be able to offer them. Uh, and what, they do, what they're doing is that they want to help you as the founder of the company. And maybe they've got a part of them as giving back to the entrepreneurial community by, by investing in your business, someone they know and trust. 
that's the nature of friends and family. And I urge most of the people I work with to have this be a debt relationship where the founder, the founders borrow the money from Uncle Jim, Aunt Sue, and dad or mom or college buddies and pay it back over a long term and maybe start paying a year after you got the loan, but offer them a great interest rate. Uh, upwards to low double digits in some cases. 10, 11 percent is what I'm thinking. But you can structure deals like this and the terms, as I said earlier, that you're going to get are going to be much more attractive. Now, these are the, these are the <clears throat> alleged professional investors, angels. Angel investor, they, they fly in packs. You've heard some of the names around Research Triangle Park. I run one of them. <laughs> the angel group, along with my friend, Rich. Uh, uh, I'm FRTP, but you've heard of the Triangle Angel Partners and, and Research Triangle Capital, and the list goes on all over North Carolina. But these are a group of high net worth individuals that have formed together uh, as accredited investors. They each have to be accredited. So the angel group in its entirety is accredited. Um, Many of them are former entrepreneurs or experienced company executives. They're wealthy people. They, they probably had very good jobs in, in very responsible positions. And they take a range of involvement um, because a lot of them are retired. They have free time. So they could take on roles like lead investor, uh, any one of these groups. Uh, uh, they could offer a board member, like chairman of the board or a board member that represents an angel, angel syndicate, a group of angel groups. Uh, they may want to be not only an investor, but an advisor to your company. <clears throat> One of the reasons they are investing is because they like your company, be, probably because they know your industry or they know the kind of product line you're offering. But <clears throat> operationally, most are going to be passive. They're not going to become your head of marketing or head of sales. That's unlikely. <clears throat> But they, they can help a lot by leading you to customers, other uh, uh, company relationships, partnerships, and things like that. And their general uh, wisdom, they'll share with you readily because not, they have a vested interest in you being successful. But the amount that's invested is much larger, uh, as little as 25K all the way up to 250 for any single angel group. Um, the average is like 220 or 30 across the United States for any single investment by an angel group. Uh, any angel group is involved in many deals. They're diversified. They have to be because <laughs> they're rolling the dice on 20, 20 to one shots that their most recent investment, the one they're looking at right now, will return 20 times what they invested and make up for half the investments that turned out to be dead losses. And I'm not kidding on that. And at a later time, catch me at an event, I'll, I'll tell you what the, what the game plan is for how you make money at high, at high compound interest rates in angel investing. So why they invest um, is the love of the action. Uh, they wanna give back just like Uncle Jim and Aunt Sue did earlier. Uh, it, the serious ones, include, and more likely the group, are, are creating a portfolio of investments in mid-teens total number of companies per fund. Uh, but from the perspective of the angel investor themselves, this is mad money. I, my term, not theirs. This is an amount of money, a, a very a low single-digit percentage of their entire wealth, you know, three or four percent, they put into this kind of an instrument because they want to. They want to give back, uh, and they want the returns, quite frankly. Uh, and they're going to play this game accordingly in order to assure, assure themselves that they they get this. Uh, I put up here greater than twenty percent IRR. That's on any single deal, but. All said and done, we're going to be 15 to 17% over a, a five to seven year period. 
So these are the angels. These are the early professionals in, in investing in early stage companies. This is the first money in um, that gets a company launched in the first place. So those are angels. Now the debt financiers, financiers, if you will, are pri private banking institutions as well as indiv individuals. Now the various ways you're gonna use this kind of money is like equipment financing where the equipment becomes you know the collateral for for the loan uh, building up fit which i mentioned earlier which ought to be worked into into a lease sometimes that can't be done mortgages i never encourage somebody to buy buildings but some cases that makes sense um, but whether you're going after private institutions uh, through brokers or were you going straight to Bank of America or Wells Fargo or one of these highly regulated banks There's a few must-haves here Typical considerations that are pretty universal the difference between the two the private institutions and private in, in, in private individuals and regulated institution is the judgment they can make in approving a loan but in all cases, the borrower has to have good credit. That means you're in the 700s somewhere, mid to high 700s in your credit rating. Uh, collateral, more often than not, is required. That means you put up your, your part of your stock portfolio or the equity in your home, uh, but the bank or any one of these financing institutions want to see how the heck you're going to pay this back if this business doesn't work. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, and this is where judgment starts to play in, they're going to want to see a couple of years of financials behind you. So this for, form of financing comes a little later in this startup phase where you run a couple of years and you and you've got some financials to show that you make enough money to pay the premiums uh, on this loan uh, but they do rarely finance startup businesses because the standards are so high uh, uh, for for uh, being approved for it particularly these SBA backed loans which have strict guidelines it's like binary yes or no you, you have it or you don't yes or no and anything that they look at as a criteria for approving a loan and the answer is no it's no for the whole thing there is no judgment at all for private institutions though non-regulated banks therein judgment starts to apply so you've got a better chance of getting a loan from private institutions than you will regulated banks, which uh, really don't have choice uh, any other way. So that's debt financing. The, the final one, sorry, the final one is crowdfunding. A, a uh, financing capability that has emerged over the la rapidly over the last five years. I mentioned earlier rewards-based uh, through Kickstarter and Indiegogo and some of these other campaigns, investment-based debt or equity that are emerging, particularly debt uh, and very attractive uh, debt alternatives where you pay the loan uh, as a from a share of your revenue. They're called rev share deals. They're gaining in popularity. Um, often syndicated, particularly those you know, the equity crowdfunding. Uh, platforms have ways to syndicate groups of people into a single entity it makes uh, makes the deal much more attractive later when subsequent investors are looking at it and watch out for this not accredited investors are allowed but there are limits on the amount of money and, and that kind of thing but be forewarned uh, taking on non accredited investors and later hoping that you can get accredited in, uh, in, uh, sorry, institutions uh, that demand accredited investors is going to be a problem. So be careful, talk to your lawyer before you take on one of these uh, equity investment platforms 
and make sure that lawyer understands where you're headed in your overall financing strategy. Be very, very careful. Debt financing, you're gonna be quite fine with. Equity-based is full of snakes. Be careful. But in all of what you hear about crowdfunding, this is not a panacea. <laughs> this is a lot of work, I tell you. Uh, you've got to have a solid business plan. You've got to do a video that's a kick-ass video that really gains attention and gets people in interested, at least looking at your deal online on this crowdfunding platform that you've chosen. You have to have a website that people go to that want to find out who the heck you are and make sure that uh, what you say you are, you evidently are. Then uh, once you got the website, guess what you do? Marketing, social media outreach to, to everybody on the face of the earth through adver you know, social media advertising and, and email campaigns and whatever the right way is to reach all these people that could possibly come onto this crowdfunding platform and, and provide you some financing. So this, this is a major, what I'm trying to get across, this is a major marketing effort. And if you don't know how to do these things, marketing things, you're gonna to have to get help and it's gonna cost you money to get the help. And that sometimes is 10 to $15,000, sometimes more. So you'll get it all back, of course, when you're successful with your campaign, uh, but it's a lot of work is all I'm trying to say. So in closing, I hope this was helpful. You've seen the various stages of financing. You've seen that there are lots of options at each stage of the maturity of a business. Uh, and you've seen the various forms of financing in aggregate that could be available to you. So I uh, wish you the, best, the very best on your financing uh, venture, adventure, uh, and all the best uh, for the success of your companies. Again, my name is Bill Warner. I've enjoyed talking to you. I'll see you again. Have a great evening and a, and a great week. Talk to you soon.